How's it going? Welcome back to the JC channel. I'm Jerry and we have an NU match today. And last giveaway's winner, Nico Law, is on screen right now. Be sure to check your inbox on YouTube or alternatively I am active on Twitter and Facebook. Link is down below if any crew members have any questions or concerns to share with me. Anyway, this battle was against Raymond, aka Flaming Axel. He is a very good battler and does mostly Pokemon and Kingdom of Hearts videos. So be sure to check out his channel after the video and subscribe if you enjoy. Links are down below. Without further ado, let's get started. Today's battle is going to mostly feature the potential and power that Ninjas can bring to a team. It is also a great lead due to its insanely high base speed of 160, putting it as the second fastest Pokemon in game, just slightly slower than Deoxys speed form. The key to using Ninjask is trying to get a sub off without it breaking in order to get a free Swords Dance and potentially passing it off with the sub, speed boost and plus 2 attack. Luckily for us he is potentially running a defensive Whirlipede and cannot take out our sub. Instead he is going to go into his Electrode as we get a free Swords Dance off. And before I baton pass I want to make sure whoever I bring in is going to receive the maximum amount of speed boost that should give me enough to outspeed this Electrode. Therefore going for the Protect to scout out the Hidden Power. But for some reason at the same time I knew it was Hidden Power Ice but yet I convinced myself that it was Hidden Power Fire. Either way I was banking on either outspeeding Electrode with plus 3 speed or taking a non super effective HP Fire. Not worth but hey, if Marowak takes it from here it wouldn't give Ninjask any time to shine. And hence this video wouldn't be the way it is. So he is going to outspeed regardless of all those speed boosts and get that massive hit off before we take out this troublesome Electrode. The nice thing about Marowak is the item Thick Club, which it is able to utilize which doubles its attack just like huge power from Azumarill. And just like Azumarill it is a bulky poke that lacks speed. But unfortunately Marowak also lacks Belly Drum, a priority move such as Azumarill's Aqua Jet, a good typing, and it is completely item reliant which means that uh, moves such as knockoff completely shuts it down, which places this poke in the NU tier. Unfortunately, Marowak's Reign of Terror is short-lived and we are back to Ninjask who is going to promote another one of its team members into Uber status. So here we get a free sub off as he goes for the shift gear, and because it is a Ninjask, the plus one from the speed boost is easily going to place us ahead in speed over the plus two speed that Kling Clang received. We get a Swords Dance off as he misses the gear grind, which I do apologize to him as that was extremely unfortunate as it does have an accuracy of 85, sharing the same rate as Stone Edge. At this point in time we can safely baton pass away the speed boosts, plus 2 and the sub onto our Malamar, which is going to be a small fun sweep in itself. This time he does land the gear grind which is not only going to take out our sub, but also do a hefty chunk to the Malamar behind it. And at this point in time, I was positive that my Malamar would outspeed an Oko with a plus 2 superpower, but I also remember he had a Ghost type sitting in his team, so the obvious prediction was to go for the Night Slash. And we actually managed to Oko his presumably defensive wall, which is a big plus to me, but in hindsight, even if I went for the superpower, I probably would have outsped and taken him out with the Night Slash on the second turn. But the speculation part of my head is now telling me that he would probably pull a double switch predicting that Night Slash. But right here we just fall short of getting an Oko on the bulky Marsh Tom and he surprises me with the counter. So much power that it completely takes out the Rampaging Malamar. It is surprises like this which makes the battle so much fun. Once again we are going to pivot back to the Ninjask who is going to boost another Pokemon into Uber status. We could only wonder who it will be next. This time we get off a free sub by playing a bit of a mind game breaking our pattern of alternating between sub and protect by going for the substitute twice in a row while getting him to switch out by making him think that we are going for the protect. So he does bring the Kling Clang in, which is a really good play on his part because even behind a sub, Swellow will go down to a plus 1 attack and cannot really dent a steel type even with a plus 2 attack boost. And Muck would get outsped due to the plus 2 from ship gear and cannot take 3 separate hits from the gear grind. Therefore he goes for the shift gear which if we were paying attention essentially it locks us into baton passing only to Regirock. But if the former was to happen and we did not pay attention, we would just be throwing away pokes for free and he would just be KOing them. So ladies and gents, 
Kling Clang is officially a scary poke to deal with. And knowing the gear grind is coming, the only poke who should, and I must say there is always a chance of a high roll, but regardless of gear grind being super effective, Regirock should still live it. My Regirock being a whopping 548 defense at level 100 with max EVs in health should be okay in taking it. So finally, the baton pass happens and out comes Regirock. The moment of truth has arrived. Will he survive or will he not? Will I need to send someone else in order to deal with this Kling Clang? Now that is the first gear grind hit as we get the leftovers recovery. Will we be able to take two more or will he get a high roll? So Regirock does hang in there and with a bit of health to spare we will be going for the Earthquake to take out the Kling Clang. And that is going to be a super effective plus 2 Earthquake, finally getting rid of those bag of bolts. At this point in time, things are looking pretty good for us. Most of his big threats are weakened or have been dealt with, leaving only his Meowstic and Whirlipede who is healthy enough to put up a fight, and at this exact moment, that is what he goes into. Unfortunately for us, luck is not on our side and our Rock Slide misses, and he does opt for the Poison Jab which once again isn't going to do nearly as much damage as he would have hoped for. And at this point, there is no use in trying to over predict the protect. If Rock Slide doesn't miss, we can just simply spam it and we're in good hands, and easily be on our way to an assured victory. So this does go on for a little while and eventually we will get the Rock Slide off. And this time I suppose making up for the previous Rock Slide missing, we do land it with a flinch. So spoiler alert here, we eventually will take out the Whirlipede and he is going to throw in the towel before we can get a sweep off. Hope you guys enjoyed the battle, I will be uploading every Friday and depending on real life, work and time constraints, I may upload a second video each week. And question of the day, warning. This is a difficult one, but you can be funny or creative about it too. If I handed you an ordinary click pen as illustrated in the video, and asked you to sell the product, how and what would you do? Be as detailed as you can. To win the prize, simply like, favorite, be subscribed and answer the question of the day, followed by hashtag JC giveaways. Once again, the winner will be announced and contacted in one week from when the video was posted. Thanks for watching, have a great weekend and I will see you in our next video. Cheers.